All right. Good morning. Sunday morning here, just about nine o'clock. John again, once again, going for uh, Immaculate Grid, going for that low rarity score. Um, did want to give a huge shout out to, uh, I was just watching the Brewers and the Braves last night and the major league debut of one Sal Freelich. Uh, incredible first game in the major leagues. Goes three for three with, uh, I guess, a run scored and two RBI, including the game winning RBI on a sacrifice fly and tacked on two web jams on top of that. He was, it was, he was magnificent. It was an absolute joy to watch. Um, just absolutely spectacular. So hope for, for a little bit more of that today with the, uh, with the Brewers going for the series win against the Braves. And I'm going to start sharing and go for uh, my own, my own wins here in uh, Immaculate Grid. I have too many things open. There it is. All right. Hit refresh. Oh, man, it's all teams. All teams. That's interesting. I've not seen this before. All right. This is going to be fun. So we got the Cubs, the White Sox, the Orioles. So we got Harold Baines up here. And we got the Twins, the Dodgers, and the Nationals down here. Um, I just, because he was on the baseball reference homepage, in fact, we could even do this. Uh, he's not there anymore. But I'm going to go with uh, someone here who I just noticed played the very end of his career with uh, with the Nationals. Actually, would he work anywhere else? Actually, this is a better one. I I, I, had a good, I was going to put Jeffrey Hammonds. Jeffrey Hammonds would be a great score there. I think I'm going to go with someone who might be a slightly worse rarity score, but a better story. And that story is Tim Raines. So Tim Raines obviously played the bulk of his career with the Montreal Expos, who of course become the Washington Nationals. I think most people know that. What most might most people might not know is that he played, I think, a couple games with the Baltimore Orioles in one of his last seasons. And the reason he actually requested a trade to go come to the Orioles, the reason he played those games was his son was on the team. So he got to play a little bit with his son. Warms my heart. I'm going to go with Tim Raines. I don't think, I don't know how many people will remember that, but I thought it was pretty cool. Jeffrey Hammonds was the oddball because he played a few games with the Nationals at the end of his career. So yeah, he was playing with his son here, Tim Raines Jr. Okay, 2% of people remember that story. I would have been better off going with Jeffrey Hammonds uh, for the score, but I like the story. Um, middle here, I'm going to go Dick Allen because I know he played with both teams. Won an MVP with the White Sox. 1.0%. Pretty good so far. Tim Raines would also have worked over here. Let's see. I'm going to go... Eddie Murray will work here, but I think that'll be too popular. Twins is twins is an interesting one. I might try to see if I can come up with someone who played for both the Browns and the Senators. Cause I think that would be that would be better. <laughs> um it would be it'd be a lot more rare. And yeah, just uh scouting around here. This is actually, yeah, like a, a lot of these are just not uh, not swinging right to the the forefront of the mind. Um, yeah, Eddie Murray will work there, but I think will be I the first chapter of my book. I guess I'll just give the plug right now. The first chapter of my book, Baseball's Most Fun Frivolities, up on Amazon. Uh, link will be in the description. Anyway, uh, first chapter is about Eddie Murray's 1990 season, which was with the Dodgers. And the story there is basically that he wins the major league batting title, but does not win the national league batting title. Um, but I, I think he's well known enough that, uh, you know, I'm you know, career uh, hall of famer, 500 home runs, 3,000 hits. I think he's well known enough that that one's going to uh, do really well. Um, or just get a lot of high rarity score, which is the opposite of doing really well in this game. 
White Sox, Nationals, uh, Adam Eaton certainly works, but again, really recent. I think that would be, uh, I, I think that would get a high, uh, too high of a score. AJ Przinsky will work here. I just watched a, I think it was a Jolly Olive video about uh, trades. It was in the theme of the trade deadline and what a disastrous trade that was for the Giants to acquire AJ Przinsky only to have him bounce over to Chicago the very next season. Um, pretty, uh, pretty well-known deal though, I think. I got a good one here. Won the 1991 World Series with the Twins. And then I know he was with the Cubs in the late 90s. I remember watching him in those early early days of the Brewers being in the National League. Kevin Tappany takes 2%. All right. You know what? It's Hall of Fame weekend. And he was not... He only played about 80 games with the Dodgers, but I suspect this one won't do great because, you know, you see his, like the the baseball uh, Hall of Fame or the MLB promos for the induction ceremony, uh, which is in four hours, I think. They will show McGriff with all the teams. And the final team on there is the Dodgers. I think he played like another season or something with the Devil Rays, but you see like that beautiful follow through swing with the Dodgers where he barely played. So I think this will actually be a pretty, uh, not, uh, this will be a pretty high rarity score, but I'm going to go with it anyway. Honor of hall of famer, Fred McGriff. Oh man. Only 0.4%. All right. All right. Get my coffee there. Hopefully get my brain working a little bit. I'm trying to think like guys from like the uh, like Goose Goslin. I know he played for the Senators. Did he ever, was he on the Browns? Henny Menish. These are kind of, these are some names that are springing to my mind. And I'm like pretty sure they played for the Senators, but maybe made their way over to the Browns. Um, who, of course, become the Orioles. And then, you know, down here, again, Tim Raines would have been uh, would have been a solid pick over here, but missed that uh, missed that opportunity. Cal Schwarber will work here. Uh, I'm actually going to go with Mark Grezelonic. He'll work for both teams. 0.6%. I'm sure I can come up with Hardy. How about JJ Hardy? The question is really like, it's it's not, did he play with both teams? He did. The question is how well remembered will he be as a twin? Cause he only played there for a season. Um, he went there from the Brewers. They traded JJ Hardy for Carlos Gomez, um, which, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not even sold on like how that worked because or as as far as if it was a good trade or a bad trade, because Carlos Gomez was magnificent for the Brewers for a couple of years there. Um, took a while to kind of develop. Once he got a little bit more patient, the play was always a spectacular defender, but he really put it together in like 2013. I think he had like an eight war season in 2013. Hardy was just consistently good for the Orioles uh, as a shortstop after that. And the thing is, he was he was really sound uh, defensively and, you know, he had decent power bat, didn't reach base a lot. Um, but the Brewers uh, shortstops during that time were awful. He had like Ineski Betancourt and late stage Alex Gonzalez, the, the second Alex Gonzalez. Um, yeah. You know who else will work? I'm going to go, I I think I'm going to not go with Hardy just because Hardy's too recent, but on the theme of the 91 twins, I'm going to go with Scott Erickson who came over. He was with the Baltimore Orioles when I started watching baseball and this is the Orioles were really good. They won the East. The first year I really started watching baseball, 1997 Scott Erickson was basically their number two or three. I guess it was Musina, Jimmy key and him were like the, the head of the rotation for the Orioles, but he was on that. He was a 20 game winner for that uh, 91 twins team, arguably 
uh, Jack Morris was really the number three starter on that team. But of course, that's not who Tom Kelly was going to go with in, uh, in crunch time. Scott Eric, man, he made all the way to 06. So he was a baby on that World Series winning team. Takes 5%. Okay, that's it's a bit higher than I would have thought. I, maybe I should have. Uh, I'll, I'll check it out. I wonder if Goose Goslin or Honey Menish, I'm pretty sure they played for the Senators. Um, I, I just wasn't confident enough to say they actually played for the Browns, but something in me was saying they probably did at some point. There's definitely people who played for the Senators and Browns. Um, and there's probably play, people who played for the Senators and White Sox as well who are less recent than A.J. Pruszynski, who's who I've got on uh, on my mind. So I've, I I could definitely get Immaculate Greg. I could go Pruszynski, go Eddie Murray, and I go Adam Eaton down here. Um, and that would work. Um, but I think those would be pretty high for rarity score. Right now I'm rocking through six people. I'm rocking seven, eight, nine, eleven. So if I come up with some better people, I could still go sub-20. Um, look at those thing is they, they don't trade very often in division. So that's what makes, makes this one tricky. Octavio Dotel, I don't think played for the Orioles. I think that's one of the teams he didn't play for. So I can't be doing that. Um, I think he might've played for the nationals though. He did definitely played for the White Sox. I don't think he played for the Twins. He may have played for the Nationals, but I'm not saying that one with a ton of confidence. Um, trying to think, like Javi Vasquez, did he ever play for the White Sox? I don't think so, but maybe. Yeah, it's going to take too long. I mean, I've got three of these where I've got picks that I think will just be too obvious. I mean, AJ Pruszynski was a mainstay in Chicago for, for such a long time. I wonder if Roberto Hernandez, he, he bounced around a little bit. I wonder if he, he ever made his way out there. Um. Mike Cameron doesn't work. He didn't play for either of these teams. I'll just go uh, around the horn in the late nineties, and then I'll I'll just put in the three, and and we'll see how I do. Um, the uh, let's see for the the White Sox. I mean, I'm thinking around that time you got Pruszynski and. You know, obviously Frank Thomas not going to work. Paul Canerco not going to work. Paul Canerco did come up in the Dodger system, but that's irrelevant at this point. Um, at Ray Durham, he didn't work his way over. Robin Ventura, Ozzy Guillen, uh, Albert Bell played a couple of years. Mike Lodonias, Carlos Lee, Mike Cameron, like I said. Um, so that was that was my White Sox that I was able to come up with. Um, what if there's anyone? What if Todd Zeal did he ever play for the Orioles? He bounced around quite a bit. I got one that'll work. I think it'll be better, or you know, better scoring. Because the the Dodgers. Very famous trade, executed trade with the Marlins um, at the end of or during the 1998 season, during the fire sale Marlins were having after winning their uh, first World Series. The Marlins traded Gary Sheffield, Charles Johnson, Bobby Bonilla, who was an Oriole a couple of years prior to that, and um, Jim Eisenreich was the other guy. Um, I've got him saved in my back pocket next time I see Marlins and Dodgers. But anyway, they trade him, uh, all those folks, uh, for I think Todd Zeal. And then um, the other person in that trade was uh, Mike Piazza. Piazza's then promptly flipped to the Mets, I think for Preston Wilson. Um, but it 
does mean that Bobby Bonilla does work. I just don't, I, I wasn't thinking Bonilla as a Dodger because I don't associate him with the Dodgers at all, but I know he was in that trade and was with the Orioles like in 96 and is still being paid by them. Okay, went sub 1% on that one. Let's see, White Sox and Nationals. Again, I'm, yeah, I'm really thinking I should, it, it, this would have been a lot smoother if I'd gone Tim Raines over. Actually, Tim Raines over here probably would have gotten a, a much higher percentage than I could have gone with this rare Jeffrey Hammonds, which I don't think a lot of people were going to get. Uh, and I could probably just suck it up and do H.A. Przinsky for like 20%. <laughs> um, let's see, other other White Sox. Um, let's see, the... Uh, the the starting pitchers on that 05 team they included John Garland, uh Mark Burley, um El Duque? Was El Duque ever an expo? I don't know. Or even a national. Uh Con Contreras was in there. And then you bounce around, you got uh Joe Creed and Creedy. I'm not sure how to say his name. You got Canerco. You got Pesednik. Krasinski behind the plate. Jermaine Die. He's not going to work. All right. And then the question is, man, how about this one? Did Did Al Simmons ever play for the Washington Senators? So for the record, I could have gotten it, but let's find out. Oh, he did. And he got 0.06%. Oh, that was a good gamble because it worked. 0.06% <laughs> from a first ballot Hall of Famer. That was a satisfied coffee slurp. All right. White Sox and Nationals slash Expos. Dare I go with Octavio Dotel? When in doubt, go with Octavio Dotel. That's the uh, that's the mantra here. I know he played for the White Sox. I'm like, I'm like fifty fifty on if he played for the Nationals. Um, the other thing is, if he works, he'll still he'll actually do pretty well because I think a lot of people have adopted the same mantra of when in doubt, go with Octavio Dotel. Um. Yeah, Adam Eaton's going to be, I think, the most popular. How about some just 90s Expos? Because I had Grazlotic at, at a shortstop. Um, I think Sigi was at first base. Henry Rodriguez went to the Cubs, not the White Sox. So he actually would have worked here. Um, yeah, you know, Vlad Guerrero, obviously in right field. Javi Vasquez, I'm just I'm trying to piece together if he was with the White Sox. He was definitely with the Expos in the like early aughts. Seems to me he might have might have bounced around there. And if I'm thinking in the 80s, I mean you got Andre Dawson, you got Tim Raines, you got Gary Carter, uh, you got Tim Wallach. Orlando Cabrera. Brera, I think, might have been with the White Sox briefly. Dare I? 0.8%. All right, so I get the 13 rarity score. What I don't know if this is if this made for decent content. So if you could post a, a comment, if you'd rather see me just lock in the three rather than struggle for five or 10 extra minutes, just let me know in the comments because I'm actually truly interested. This is fun for me, but, um, you know, ultimately that was, uh, I was, I was, so I was right. Adam Eaton was going to take about 30% actually. AJ Prasinski was going to take 20. Machado takes almost half. He only played a half season with the Dodgers, but it was so recent. And I mean, 
you know, he uh, was was on that Dodgers team that eliminated my Brewers in the 2018 NLCS. So I, I remember this trade very well. Um, Matt Weider's not surprising. Schwarber, I think I mentioned, not surprising. Cody Bellinger makes sense. Latroy Hawkins is the leader here with 12%. I was not going to piece together that Latroy Hawkins was with the Cubs. I knew he was with the Twins. He bounced around a lot. I might look him up later and then just keep him in my back pocket for the for the future here. Um anyway, I don't know which uh which of these is is uh really worth going through. I'll just go through one, but uh some some White Sox slash Expos. Ooh, Bartolo Colon, that would be a good one. He did a half season with the Expos. And then uh was with the White Sox in the 03 season before finally getting his free agent deal with the uh, Angels. Edwin Jackson, that's a good super card, uh, wild card, superstar, whatever term you want to use uh, for Immaculate Grid. Reigns, I mentioned. Kip Wells, there's a reference. I remember him more at the Pirates. I was right about Vasquez. Three years there with the White Sox. He was on that 08 Central Division winning team. All right, cool. Well, this was fun as always. I will uh, get it uh, get it posted once again. Um, I'll have a link to my uh, book, Baseball's Most Fun Frivolities. There's the plug again. Uh, it will be on. It's on Amazon. Uh, appreciate everyone tuning in and have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Peace.